Imagine that you had a map of all the books that there are in the West. I'll just stick with the West for now because that makes things easier. Um, you have a map of all the books that there are in the West and you could map out the relationship between every book and every other book, the dependencies. And you'd find, for example, that you should read Hamlet because a lot of other books refer to Hamlet. Or you should read Shakespeare because a lot of other books refer to Shakespeare. And if you don't understand Shakespeare, then there's a whole bunch of books you can't understand. And then you might say, well, having to, to understand Shakespeare, what should you have read? And the answer to that could easily be, well, you probably should have read the Bible. And maybe that's, maybe that's a claim that you could make about wanting to understand any book. Because if you mapped out the relationships between all the books that there are, you'd find that the most fundamental book is the biblical library. And I think that's even merely true historically. It's partly why the museum of the Bible was so interesting to me, because walking through it, you see how the books were, how the book aggregated itself across time and became fundamental. And the first book that was really widely available for purchasing, for printing, purchasing, and reading was the Bible, and all the books that we know about now, all the millions of books that we have, emerged from that base, that trunk. And they're all related to that. And it's certainly possible that without an understanding of that fundamental book, you can't understand all the other books. And maybe it's possible that without an understanding of that book, you can't understand other people. 